When Duelist Alliance first dropped in the TCG, the entire game of Yu-Gi-Oh was changed forever. With a budget of £40 a week, and with three of the Shadow Structure decks, I'm going to attempt to make a fully viable Shadow deck. From beginning to end, I think I have a chance. Welcome to Shadow Sealed Only. Alright, natural light, let's see if this only opportunity is actually a good opportunity for me to do this. So, to address what happened in last week, we opened really great and actually did equally good. So, I realised that we had a little bit of a problem with a deck last week, and that was something very simple. We have no interruptions, so after selling some of the cards that I've pulled, and at the same time after, well, pretty much saving the money from the tins that we had the other week, I managed to get, thanks to a deal, not one, but two of these. Yes, we're finally getting into Dual Devastator, and I think two should be more than enough. Afterwards, I'm not sure what we're going to be opening up next until Dual Overlord comes out. Might be the tins, might not. Again, I'll let you guys decide that. But still, this is going to be good nonetheless. So, let's just shut up. Crack these open and get right into it. Well, I would say that, but the thing is, we already know what's in this set, so I'll see you after the deck profile. Uh, I have a deck profile portion, but there is one thing I am going to open up, and that is these. These were basically the prize packs I've earned from coming in sixth place last week with the deck, so. Sorry, I'm doing this in the morning. So. Let's see what's in these. I think we'll start... You know what, let's leave that for last, just in case it is an ultimate in it. These are... Yeah, these are first editions. Right then, so... Ah, uh, it's not screen enough. So we get this vault... The artwork in this guy is really good. Uh, the Psychic card, that card, the Tenny Grass, uh, Wind Rare, which is good, and... Yuck, 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 you, uh, Dream Mirrors. Uh, I'm just hoping for that one day they'll get some good support. Like, I, I have the entire core and everything, but they just... They just don't have anything that lets them do anything at the moment. Ah, uh, it's a 10 year Link monster, and why? Uh, ah, well. If I was hoping for that Appaloos, uh, then I'd possibly get a box or something, but now it's time for this thing. Let's see what's in here. Oh, is it not super rare, isn't it? No, it isn't. Okay, then, so we have Fortune Lady, uh, Limiter Removal, and another <laughs> <laughs> two tokens and two OTSs, can you believe that? Oh well. Well, I guess I'll see you after I've opened this. So there are two things that we can technically open from Dual Devastators being these, but eh, what else are you gonna show us that are really high in value? So let's go ahead and open them, see what we get. We have Pegasus, Isiju, Ash, and Yugi. Fair enough. This one, I already know it's got the dogwood, spooky dogwood right in front of us. So, go Sister, Reaper, Pegasus again, and Beth. Hey! We almost got all of them. Nice. I'll take it. I think it's safe to say at this point that the deck in amongst itself is almost complete. That's kind of how effective Dual Devastator is. As soon as you buy at least two of these things and start upgrading your decks with Dual Devastator, the amount of differences it makes is astronomically high. Like, no joke. And this is the main deck right now. We have six hand traps being two of each of Ash, Ogre, and Valor, and those will come in great handy, handy nonetheless. Call by the Grave and Mind Control are fantastic cards none the least. I'm still going to be using Foolish and Avarice for the time being. And as for Reshadol Incarnation, it will stay at 2, but depending on how things go, it may change. But literally, it's just unbelievable. The fact that 
a set of two boxes actually did this. The extra deck is mostly just the same, except for two new additions. Sorry you just scolded, and <laughs> um, about Trishula. I did show it in this, but in the final build, I decided to take it out. I opted to put in uh, Topologic Bomber Dragon instead as an aggressive link for to go over it. And this is a side deck, and honestly, I think we're good to go with this side deck. It has a little bit of everything. It has disruption for the graveyard, just in case I have some graveyard matchups. I spell pol uh, Super Poly, the Gamma Seal, place to the Lava Golem now. So and so, I'll see what locals. Okay, so round one was up against a familiar matchup from two weeks ago, being Utopics. Yes, that very same Utopic player. And um, let's just say uh, round one was pretty much this. That winder on board was literally a nuisance to him throughout the entirety of this round. He was capable of getting Utopia double out on board after surviving the turn with only two monsters on the field with one of which I couldn't run over. But he kind of forgotten one major thing though. Winder was on board. To end things off as well, I made Gravity Control up, mind controlled his Utopic Double, used it as fusion material for Construct, and started beating over him, and by the time it was all said and done, all he could do was set pass until it was game for me. Game 2 I left with Mathman and... What else do you want me to say? As soon as Winter hits a board, any deck that relies on multiple special summons in order to get their combo started, like Utopics and Crusadias, there's a hard opportunity to get over it. Although I do feel sorry for the poor lad for having a very beaten up Gogo -Go Giant. Round 2 I was up against Mermels and I was legit legitimately bricking it when I actually found out. His first turn only relied on two set back row cards because he didn't open anything relatively all that worthwhile. However, as soon as my turn came around and I started off a play, I was a complete dum-dum when it came to Ma uh, Armageddon Knight's effect in realizing that he sends any dark monster, not just level 4 or lower, so I could have actually saved myself a little bit of time, but it wouldn't have mattered because he would have hit me with a board like this. Oh, he has a really, really beautiful looking Atlantean Dragoons right there, I'm not gonna lie. Game 2 was actually kind of interesting, because I managed to open up the Inspector board that I sided in, hit the Shadow Fusion to make Winder, and then passed it back to him. He Gamma Sealed my Inspector border, which I'm not gonna lie is possibly the better out of two options, but as soon as my turn came around, because that was his only special summon, I had enough damage on board to pretty much spell game from there for me. Unfortunately for my Mermel friend, fate was just not on him for game 3. As I started my turn off with a Mathematician, sent a few things and set a few things past turn to him, but as soon as he activated one of the Mermel Abyss cards, I think it was Abyss Tears, I El Shadal fusioned into Winder, and he had to automatically go into the battle phase just to run over Winder, get into main phase 2 so that he can summon out a Calamities of all things, and when my turn came around the corner, I simply slammed the Gamma Seal on board, summon check in defense mode, he switched Gamma Seal to defense mode, I summoned Beast, and then I realized I could pretty much summon out Skomata, pop my own Gamma Seal, and just simply finish him off. It was unlucky for him. The next round was Marincess, and oh boy this was interesting, because I automatically start off with landing that Winder on board, and I know to myself that this Winder is going to be more than enough to last me the entire round. Until it gets infirmed, and then he started comboing off. Lovely. But by the time the next turn came around the corner, I simply just made this. With that Topologic on board as well, things were not looking pleasant for him. Game 2 ended in one of the most oddest ways I could possibly have a game in, because he managed to finish off his entire combo, and all I could do on my first turn was simply abuse all of my monster cards effects that would send themselves to the graveyard, and hopefully draw any form of fusion card off of Pot of Avarice. I did, but it was Super Poly, and at this point in time, I know that I'm not going to have anything that can easily out this board. But when I saw him having multiple Cybers monsters on the field, I read the Attic Nister Earth monster I had in my extra deck, and I realized that the materials I needed for it was already there and then, after getting it mixed up with a Predator Plant one. So... 
I only just managed to snag victory because of this play, because as soon as I did, he legitimately had no other plays in his extra deck in order to combo off and continue forward with his later game state. So that was another easy victory for me. Final round was Shadal invoked, and I was looking forward to seeing how this deck fares against the best variant of Shadal's at the moment. He bricks and decides to set two impacts, so I summoned the Construct and a few things, and then I started taking control of the game with my hand traps. Until this happened! Game 2. For the next game though, it was all me. He completely bricked in this game and didn't draw anything good of a desires. I just simply went off into a board like this, and when he did try to do some things, I just simply hit with hit them with my own countermeasurements, like called by the grave on that damned rolling lock right there. And as soon as his turn came around and seen that he had to face this, yeah, he scooped. Whilst looking back at Game 3, it was one of those measurements for me where I could have won if it wasn't for an unfortunate knowing of circumstances, because I pretty much took full control in the first part of the matchup with all the hand traps yet again, but surprisingly enough, when my turn came around later on in the stage where I know that I could easily out a single Mechapa, he flipped El Shadal Fusion to summon Winder on my board. Now, I had two Mathmans already in my play. One was on the field and I summoned the other one. He didn't negate it with Mechapa, so I just simply decided to uh, make El Shadal Construct and then attack Oliver the Squamata with the two Mathematicians. I was hoping for Super Poly, but if I survived until the next turn, it would have been Super Poly. It wasn't. Which aggravated living hell out of me because the two cards I drew were mind control. And I had the regular Shadal Fusion in my hand, and I knew he didn't have any Ash Blossoms in hand either. So, to put things short, if I act if I knew that my next two cards were going to be were going to be the mind controls, I would have uh, suicided the mathematicians first, not bothered on fusion summoning, mind controlled both his Mechaba and his Winder, then I would have used them both off into my own Shadal construct. But unfortunately I did not. If I did knew that was going to happen, then it would have been a lot more of a better circumstance, but unfortunately it wasn't. So, unlucky, but, nah, this match was a close fun one, and I'm glad to see that I got an opportunity to see how this deck fares against the meta. And this one is going to get a whole lot stronger whilst we're going to continue with the sealed challenge. 3-1 is the record for this week, so not bad, not bad at all, we're still doing pretty good. But next week, though, we're going to open some bizarre sets, because it's by time we started getting our win condition for this deck. 